We're so lucky in Ireland to be surrounded by the sea and have fantastic fish available to us. Today I'm going to be making some of my favorite fish dishes, which are all quite Southeast Asian in flavor and influence, but all made with ingredients that you can buy here. I'm going to be making a light coconut broth with Dublin Bay prawns and pak choy, spicy fish cakes with a coriander and lime mayonnaise, and then a really gorgeous crab and noodle salad. And then to finish off, a lemon and ginger ice cream, which is just fantastic for eating after any of these fish dishes. I'm going to begin with the Vietnamese crab salad with rice noodles. I'm using for this rice noodles, and these are the very thin rice noodles, or rice vermicelli. And I've got half a packet here, which is 125 grams. And I'm going to pour on top of the noodles some boiling water. They need to sit in boiling water to soften. There we go. So I'll put those there and allow those to sit for five minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to make the dressing for the salad and put together the other ingredients. So for this, I've got 50 grams of caster sugar, 75 mils of Vietnamese or Thai fish sauce, and I need the same amount of lemon or lime juice. Juice of one large lemon really is about 75 mils and add the nam pla, or the fish sauce, and the lemon juice into the bowl of sugar. And one chili, which I'm going to de-seed. I'm going to take out most of the seeds because it, it'll be quite hot with the seeds, a bit too hot for my liking. And then chop, or slice. So chopped chili is going in here and two cloves of grated or crushed garlic. And then some ginger. I've got whole root ginger, which I'm going to peel, and then add two teaspoons of grated ginger. I'm also going to put in some cucumber and some radishes into this. This is quite a large cucumber, so I won't need all of it. Cut the cucumber in half. I'm not going to peel the cucumber, though you could if you like. Scrape out the seeds of the cucumber because the seeds don't add anything. All they add really are moisture and they'll just make this salad too watery. And cut the cucumber into long, thin lengths and then chop. So add the cucumber into the dressing followed by the radishes. I've got 150 grams of radish here, radishes that I am topping and tailing, just cutting the ends off, and slicing quite thinly. They add a really good crunch to the salad. So in go the radishes. Give it a stir, give it a little toss in the dressing. Take a fork, I've got a spoon. And just while you're preparing the rest of the ingredients, let the vegetables just kind of sit in this dressing and they'll just soak up the flavor of the dressing. I'm going to check now to see if the rice noodles are cooked. They need to be soft. The water's cooled down quite a bit. Yep, that's perfect. So, drain the noodles. And also just rinse them to stop them from cooking anymore. Because I don't want to put hot noodles in with the lovely raw fresh vegetables, otherwise it'll soften the vegetables and kind of dull in the flavors a bit. Okay. You can, if you like, cut the noodles, but the Asians never really cut noodles, as they say that it cuts all your aspirations and hopes and dreams. So I'm definitely not going to cut the noodles. Toss the noodles through the vegetables and dressing. And now I'm going to get some coriander to chop through it. I'm just chopping up the coriander quite roughly. That's enough. Save a little bit of coriander for the top of the salad, which I can just put over here. So I'm mixing the coriander with the cucumber and the radishes through the noodles and the dressing. Lovely. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take the meat from a cooked crab. This crab I have already cooked. I put it into a saucepan of lukewarm, very salty water, like seawater they say, 
bring it up to the boil and I boiled it for just under 15 minutes and then take it out and let it drain. Let it drain either this way or this way so the excess liquid just comes out of the crab. I'm going to start by taking off the claws, put those aside, come back to those in a second, and the little legs, of which there are usually five pairs. Not too much meat would you get from these little thin legs. To take the meat out of the body, you need to press this down on your worktop like this. And as you can see then, it will all lift out easily for you. The first part of the crab that you shouldn't eat is the part that's called the sac. And that is, you see the, the kind of the eyes and the little feelers are there. Up, just under the eyes, is the sac. So snap it with your thumb and then pull it out. That is the sac. It's got these little arms and kind of legs. <laughs> So put that to the side, I'm not going to use that. And then also the next part are the dead man's fingers. These are what help the crab to breathe, like the lungs. So take all those little dead man's fingers off and put those to the side. They are both discarded. And sometimes there's a little bit of skin like that. I would take that out of the way. And then apart from that, apart from shell, the meat is all delicious. Inside the main body here, you have the brown meat. And that is absolutely delicious. It's probably got a lot more flavour, in fact, than the white meat does from the claws. So I'm going to actually just chop it up a little bit and put it all into the salad. There we go. And next, I can crack open the claws. So you happen to have a hammer in your drawer. Give them a bit of a whack. We do... Do be careful when you're cracking the shell as it doesn't actually fly into the salad or just go into the meat. So basically inside the claws it's all good meat except for this very thin sheet of cartilage. Make sure you remove that. I find it's a good idea to empty the meat out into a glass or stainless steel bowl because then when I've cracked all the meat out, I can kind of shake the meat in the bowl and if there's a little clang of a shell, then I know there's a bit of shell in there and that has to come out. So once you've got all the meat from the claws, you can even cut this body in half and get even more brown and white meat. You can really pick for hours, if you like, and get lots of little bits out. So toss together the ingredients for the dressing. I've got the brown crab meat, I've got the cucumber, the radishes, the dressing, and all the noodles. Lovely. And empty it out onto a lovely big serving bowl or plate. Let the vegetables kind of sit on top a little bit. Okay. Give it a little taste. You probably won't need any seasoning because the fish sauce tends to be quite salty. But just see if you need anything more. Mm. No, it's delicious. Mmm, that's perfect, just like that. Now, so I can sprinkle the white crab meat on top. Lovely. And then the leftover coriander and the peanuts. I've toasted the peanuts in an oven until golden, blew away the skins outside, and then chopped them up. So here is the Vietnamese crab salad with rice noodles. You've got a wonderful combination of textures and flavours in this dish because the sweetness of the crab meat is perfectly offset by the saltiness of the fish sauce and the heat from the chilies. And then with the textures you've got the crunch of the vegetables, the radishes and the cucumbers, which are fantastic with the noodles and the crab meat. It all works so well together. Now I'm going to make the spicy fish cakes with coriander and lime mayonnaise. I'm using salmon for these fish cakes, but you could also use a white fleshed fish. I'm going to put everything into the food processor. This is such a fast, quick and easy recipe. I've got 350 grams of chopped up salmon, free of skin and bone. 50 grams of butter. Two cloves of garlic, which I'm going to crush or finely grate actually in and 125 grams of breadcrumbs, which does look like a lot, but you need the breadcrumbs in here to kind of bind all the ingredients together. One egg, one lime, juiced, or half a lemon, one teaspoon, one generous teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a couple of teaspoons of Worcester sauce,
one good teaspoon of Tabasco chili sauce, a few spring onions, about four spring onions, or sometimes if they're a bit thinner, I'd use one or two more. And you could even put in here some chopped coriander or some chopped parsley. I'm going to leave these plain because I'm serving them with a coriander and lime mayonnaise. Some salt. And some pepper. And process the whole mixture until it comes together. The fish is going to get kind of whizzed up in the food processor, so it'll be quite fine. And I'm just going to taste a tiny little bit and see if the seasoning's good. If you don't want to taste this raw, well then of course you can cook a little bit on a frying pan. Mmm, it's lovely. So, heat a frying pan, add in a little bit of olive oil. And then shape these. You can of course make tiny, say, little balls if you wanted to have these with drinks or canapes, or you can make slightly larger patty shape fish cakes. So once the olive oil has warmed up a bit in the pan, add them in. When they're golden on one side, turn them over and allow them to cook on the other side. Lovely. Okay. While the little fish cakes are cooking, I'm going to make some coriander and lime mayonnaise very quickly. So for this, I've got two eggs, which I'm going to separate, use the whites for something else. There. Add in a pinch of salt. Then some mustard. A good generous half teaspoon or three quarters of a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Juice of half a lime. If I'm making a plain basic mayonnaise, I would use white wine vinegar. And then measure out eight fluid ounces or 225 mils of oil. I would usually use nearly all sunflower oil, which is tasteless, and then a little bit of olive oil. Too much olive oil, I find, is just a bit too strong. So then whisk up the egg yolks with the lime juice, the mustard, and the salt, and very slowly and gradually add in the oil, allowing it to emulsify as it goes in. That's the mayonnaise made. I'm just going to chop up some coriander. Give it a stir. Mmm. Okay. So I put some coriander mayonnaise into a bowl. Put that on the serving plate, followed by lovely. I can turn off. The fish cakes, they are cooked. They feel firm, kind of with a slight spring in the center. And they're nice and golden brown on both sides. And maybe a couple of coriander leaves on the plate. Now I can take a little bit of noodle salad with the crab, some onto the individual place. This is, of course, best eaten with chopsticks. Yum. So some chopsticks there. So there are the spicy fish cakes with coriander and lime mayonnaise, and the Vietnamese salad with noodles, crab, cucumber, and radishes which, of course, you can eat with your chopsticks. Now I'm going to make the lemon and ginger ice cream. This is incredibly refreshing and really lovely and light. I do need to make a lemon curd first. So I've got butter, 100 grams of butter, in a saucepan here. I'm going to stir around the butter and just melt it, almost melt it, before I add in the sugar. Lemon curd, once it's made, will keep for up to two weeks very well. 
Okay, into the butter, add 175 grams of caster sugar. I've already got two lemons, which have been zested and juiced. So I need to do the third one. So I need the zest and the juice of three lemons all together. So I'm going to add in the grated zest and juice of a third lemon. Lemon curd is also, of course, the base to a lemon meringue pie. And then squeeze the lemon. What makes a curd different to jam is the inclusion of eggs and butter. Add in the juice. Stir it around. It's on a very low heat. I don't want the base of the saucepan to get too hot because I'm going to add eggs into it. I've got three eggs. I'm going to add the yolk of one egg and two more whole eggs. So it's two eggs and one egg yolk. Whisk them up. Whisk them up well before you add them into the butter, sugar, lemon juice and lemon rind. So you need to stir this quite carefully over the heat. It only takes actually about four or five minutes to cook. But if you cook it on too high a heat, it will scramble. And then you'll have a sweet lemony scrambled egg. Not very nice. Stand at the saucepan and stir it constantly. It's, as you can see, thin and runny now. But in a few minutes, it will thicken. It will also thicken more as it cools down. And I need to allow it to cool completely to make the ice cream. So after a few minutes of gentle cooking, it's actually thick enough. It's cooked. So I'm going to turn off the heat and show you. It's coating the back of a spoon. And why I'm putting my finger through the line is that it will actually hold the line cleanly. The curd won't run over the line. So that's ready. You can put this into a bowl and allow it to cool. Of course, hot, it's wonderful on scones, toast. So that amount of lemon curd made about 400 mils. I have lemon curd here that I've already cooked and cooled. It does need to be cool to make this ice cream. This is 200 mils of lemon curd in here. So about half the amount of that lemon curd that I made. I always make a larger amount and have some lemon curd in a jar in the fridge. So for this 200 mils, I need 300 mils of creme fraiche and 300 mils of natural yogurt. What I like to do is to just take a little bit of the creme fraiche and really mix it through, in fact even whisk it through, just in case there are any kind of more set bits of the lemon curd and you just need to whisk them out. There we go. So that's going to soften out the lemon curd a bit. Okay. And then the rest of the creme fraiche goes in. So in this bowl I've got 200 mils of lemon curd, 300 mils of creme fraiche, 300 mils of natural yogurt. I'm also going to add in some ginger to make a lemon and ginger ice cream. So I'm going to grate in, I like to use for this amount of ice cream a good tablespoon or even two tablespoons of grated ginger. Okay, so mix this through. Okay. Give it a little taste to see if you have enough ginger in it. Mmm, that's lovely. And put it into a bowl or a tub to freeze. Cover your ice cream, pop it into the freezer. Give it at least, you know what, four or five hours to freeze. Now I'm going to make a really wonderful soup. I've got in here one litre or say just over two pints of chicken stock. Pour the chicken stock, quite a light chicken stock, pour it into a saucepan. Add in one tin of coconut milk, one chili, de-seeded, very thinly sliced. I'm slicing it into little rounds. Okay, so pop in the chili. I need to add in two spring onions that are finely sliced, even at an angle, and they look quite nice, leaving out just the dark green bits. That's going in followed by one clove of garlic, grate it in. Followed by a good generous teaspoon of peeled and grated ginger. I usually use say, a good heaps teaspoon of ginger for this amount.
Okay, so turn this up to full heat and bring it to the boil. When it boils, you can add in the pak choy. I've got two lovely heads of pak choy. And I'm shredding it. I'm shredding the leaves and the stalks too. It's a member of the cabbage family, but the stalks are quite soft. They're just fantastic. It just takes about a minute or two to cook. Once the mixture has come up to the boil, add in the shredded pak choy. And now I can prepare the prawns. This needs to cook just for about, say, half to one minute before the prawns go in. I'm using lovely fresh cold water prawns, local prawns, for this. But of course you can use, if you can't get any fresh prawns, you can use the frozen tiger prawns, the warm water prawns. And they work perfectly, you know, in a broth like this. I've taken off the head of the prawn and now I'm peeling the tail. Pinch it at the end and then the trail comes out. There we go. So once this has come up to the boil and boiled for another minute, which it has, I can add all the prawns in. Use as many prawns as you like, about 15 or 20. has just come back up to the boil again check the prawns you see they still look a little bit translucent but once they kind of turn opaque in color they're cooked meanwhile I can add in the final ingredients three tablespoons of fish sauce Thai or Vietnamese two and three juice of half a lime and some basil. I'm not going to add the basil in yet. It goes in just at the end when it's come off the heat. Give the soup a little taste. Oh, it's lovely. It doesn't need any more fish sauce or lime juice. Perfect. So I can take that off the heat because the prawns are cooked. So add in now when you're ready to serve it, the basil. Okay, take your serving bowl and a ladle and serve a lovely big bowl of soup. So there is the coconut broth with pak choy and prawns. I can now scoop and serve some ice cream. I already have some ice cream that was frozen and it's been sitting in the fridge for about 15 minutes just to soften a little bit because this is quite a hard ice cream so it's a good idea about 15 minutes before you want to serve put it into the fridge it gets that bit less soft around the edges than if you just leave it outside in your warm kitchen put some hot water into a jug there and take your serving bowl or your glass warming up the scoop helps actually give you a nice clean scoop of ice cream. The ice cream's perfect temperature for scooping. And if you happen to have some little shortbread biscuits or lemon shortbread biscuits just in the kitchen, you could serve a couple of those with this ice cream too. So there are some of my favorite seafood recipes. I made a gorgeous Vietnamese noodle salad with crab, cucumber and radishes. And then some spicy salmon fish cakes with a lime and coriander mayonnaise. And then a light coconut broth with prawns and pak choy and basil. And then this lovely fresh lemon and ginger ice cream. A wonderful way to finish off any seafood meal. So with the food sorted, you can sit back and watch the footy. Coming up in 10 minutes, Tamworth and Norwich City. Then at 5 past 5, Liverpool v Arsenal. All here on BBC One.